The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our Lord has ascended to the right hand of God to use all his rule, power, and authority for us as our God. And we eagerly wait for his return, even now as he rules over our enemies. Uh, one announcement, uh, VBS this summer is fast approaching. It will be June uh, 5th through 8th. Uh, you can register uh, children on our website. We're also looking for adult and youth volunteers. If you can help a day or two, that'd be great. Let us know. Let us open with prayer. Heavenly Father, continue to be the head of your church, to rule over us and help us to follow you in your spirit so we may be victorious over sin death and the devil as you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. He is a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us. Gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for the ascension of our Lord is from Acts, the first chapter. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands to the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, Two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is from Ephesians, the first chapter. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, 
I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, with his, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
and my mouth will declare your praise. Christ is seated at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, all power and dominion, above every name that is named. God put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. Where is the king? In this age of uncertainty, doubt, social unrest, political strife, economic downturns, lawlessness in the streets, anarchy, as a Marxist revolution marches on, and their institutions crumble under the weight of woke and weaponized mobs. Where's the king? Christians are confident because our Lord is reigning. He rules his church by the means of grace. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. And Paul, in his letter to the church of Ephesus, highlights three truths. First, good works are God-pleasing. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom of revelation in the knowledge of him. And the battle takes place every day against our new life of faith and our sinful nature. Galatians 5. The works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warned you as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Our sinful flesh battles against the life of faith. God has a very good use for you, and it's in your vocations, your callings. You've been set free from sin. You've been set free from evil. You've been set free from selfishness, to live by the Spirit, to love God, and to care for your neighbor. Vocational life. We need to be clear about good works. Good works merit nothing before God. Good works do not save you. Christ alone does all the saving work to save sinners. The Christian is called to love. We love one another because Christ first loved us. Devotion, sacrifice. We follow our Lord's lead and pick up our cross and follow him. Your instruments for good. Paul says to Titus, I want you to insist on good works, that those who believe in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for God's people. Second, saints are blood-bought. You've been purchased and redeemed in the blood of Christ. Your hearts have been enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which you're called. What are the riches of the glorious inheritance of the saints? What is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe? According to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. Blood-bought saints of Zion, You've been sanctified by the word of God. As Christ is reigning on his throne, he has given you his sacrifice. All your sins are there on the cross. All your sins are in the body of Jesus, and they're dead. They've been crucified, and you're covered in the blood of the king. Christ is risen from the dead, and he swings wide open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Christ ascended into heaven to go and prepare a place for you. John 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in Christ. In my Father's house are many rooms. 
and I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that you may be where I am. I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Third, that the church is the body of Christ. We are not a headless church. Jesus is the head, and we are his body. And what does Christ do for the body of his church? Fills her with blessings. Christ, when he was raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, all power and dominion, above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He put all things under his feet, and he gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and in all. Christ lifted up his hands, and he blessed his disciples. He blessed them. He parted from them and was carried into heaven. And he returned with great joy and were continually in the temple worshiping him. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. It's not a position of location. Not as if Jesus is locked up in heaven far, far away. Seated at the right hand of the Father is the position of power. Christ ruling his church, bringing her mercy. God's word of authority. Where two or three gather in Christ's name, there the Lord is. Christ the King is present to forgive your sins and the holy absolution. Your sins are forgiven and the word of the king is absolved, set free. The preaching of the word of God in its truth and purity. In holy baptism, the Lord ushered you into his kingdom. You are his royal priest. God has delivered you from the dominion of darkness. He has transferred you in the kingdom of his beloved son in whom you have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. The Lord who is reigning on his throne at the right hand anchors his promises here on earth for you. He anchors his promises in baptism. He anchors his promises in the Lord's Supper, in the gift of the sacraments, where sinners can find God's mercy. You've been washed clean, and the Lord promises to be with you. In Holy Communion, The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? There is one bread, and we are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Ascended into heaven, a day filled with joy, all the promises of God fulfilled. And he fills his church with blessings, with great joy, with mercy and compassion, love and good works, sacrifice and giving, loyalty, kindness, peace. In Ephesians, Paul goes on to teach about the growth of the church. Christ gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists and shepherds, teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we attain the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the statue, the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried away, by every wind of doctrine, by man's cunningness and craftiness of deceits of scheme. We speak the truth in love. We grow up in every way in him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body is joined, held together, which it is equipped, which each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Happy Ascension Day, the joyous fulfillment of all of Christ's works. In the name of Jesus, amen. Rejoice our Lord's gifts, rejoice in his love. We confess his name before the world. 
And today we use the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand for the confessing of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth,
for the whole people of God and for all people in Christ our Lord. Lord God, ruler of all, protect and defend your church from every attack of the devil. For he has gained a foothold with false teaching and ungodly living. Call to repentance and holiness through your word. Preserve your saints in the faith that they may rejoice to share in the sufferings of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, bless the work of your pastors. Bring forth harvest from the word they sow. Support those who endure fiery trials for your name. If they shine the light of the gospel, guard them and grant faithfulness in their duty. Lord, in, their mer- in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless our nation and all the peoples of the world, where war and violence threaten bring peace and justice. Be with our leaders to rule wisely. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the sick, the distressed, and the suffering, especially Linda, Gordon, LaVon, Lyle, Keith, Donna, Sandy, Jamie, Calvin, Beverly, and Tom. Grant them healing according to your will, strength and mercy according to their needs, and the peace that passes understanding. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, give us faith to recognize Christ's body and blood in the sacrament, and to receive with repentant faith this blessed food and holy communion to our salvation. Guide us to live faithfully here on earth until we live with you forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his resurrection appeared openly to all his disciples, and in their sight was taken up into heaven, that he might make us partakers of his divine life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it. Into remembrance of me. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <laughs>